Today's theme is Mary Most Devout. Mary is well known for her pity, her selfless love for humanity, and her devotion to her son during the 33 years of his life. She felt every suffering and affliction of her son and now feels deeply for this suffering world. We are here to pay homage to this wonder woman who is known to answer our prayers, who also loves us unconditionally. Let us today ask Mary to help us to become devoted stewards of God's sacred creation. Mass intentions today for the souls of John, Constance, Carmeline, and Rosalia Fernandez, Rosario Xavier Gomes, Vincent Timelo, Francis and Annie Souza, Patrick Gonzalez, Tracy Dicuna, Mani Ayer, Angela Pereira, Charles Quadris. Victor Darmain, Robert Jerson, and for good health of the donor. We shall pray for all these people and ask the Lord to grant them eternal rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear children and my dear brothers and sisters, as we go along with this Eucharistic celebration this evening, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. All together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my faults, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness and again. The Lord knows that thoughts of the wise, that they are futile, so let no one boost in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos, or Cyphus or the world, 
or life or death or the present or the future all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God the word of the lord the world and those who dwell in it it is he who set it on the seas on the rivers he made it firm response who shall climb the mountains of the lord who shall stand in his holy place the clean of hands and pure of heart whose soul is not set on vain things response the lord is the earth and its fullness blessings from the lord shall he receive and right reward from the god who saves him such are the people who seek him who seek the face of the god of jacob response the Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, on one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets getting into one of the boats which was Simon's he asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people from the boat and when he had finished speaking he said to Simon put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch and Simon answered Master we toiled all night and took nothing but at your word I will let down the nets and when they had done this they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sing but when Simon Peter saw it he fell down at Jesus's knees saying depart from me for I am a sinful man O Lord for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, 
you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children and my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Our theme today is Mary Most Devout. Going deeper into the life of Mary, this is what I have to say today as we celebrate this Eucharistic celebration. Mary's dedication towards Jesus was supreme. Mary's dedication towards Jesus was supreme. And it is further said that true devotion to God does not lie in silent contemplation, but also through prayer, and not only in prayer, but through prayer, in action. As I speak to you this evening, there is an ancient Russian legend that comes to my mind. And it goes as follows. Saint Andrew, after his crucifixion, hurried up to heaven. And he loved the cross of our Savior and his mother at the foot of the cross. Once admitted into heaven, he went helter-skelter around heaven. What was he doing? He was searching for his queen. He was searching for his mother. He was searching for the Blessed Virgin Mary, but he could not find her. So what did he do? He went to his angelic guide and he said, Hello there. Where is she? Where is my mother? Where is my queen? Where is the Blessed Virgin Mary? And the answer that he got to his question was this. She is not here, the angel replied. And seeing the surprise face of St. Andrew, the angelic guide added, She's not here. Where is she? She is in the suffering world, drying the tears of her weeping children. She is in the suffering world, wiping the tears, drying the tears of her weeping children. What a devout mother. What a devout mother was this Blessed Virgin Mary who was involved in the life of her earthly children. My dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, as you make this yearly novena, that legend perhaps beautifully expresses what Mary has been and is for us Catholics. No doubt she may be in heaven, but her heart and her mind is here with us, her children, on this very earth. All of you listening to this homily of mine this evening will agree with me that from our early childhood, Mary has been close to us. One of the first prayers we learned at our mother's knee was the Hail Mary. Almost, almost instinctively, we turn to her. Her lap contains all the sufferings of the whole humanity. The countless wounds of a human race which is continuously crucified. That is the novena we are making to this great woman to this wonderful mother, Virgin 
most devout. My dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, more than any other woman, perhaps Mary has influenced the lives of Christians, men and women and children all over the world. We can think of the number of churches dedicated to her. The masterpieces of art she has inspired. The number of religious congregations which bear her name. And they say, love gave her a thousand names. Yes, love gave this mother a thousand names. And we realize it as we say the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary when we are saying our rosary at home or in church. And Mary still continues to inspire and support men and women today in their struggles. But what do you and I do about Mother Mary? We often like to picture Mary lost in contemplation, with her eyes closed obviously to those around her and their needs. She would so totally be absorbed in God that she would have no time for anyone else. But is this the Mary that we are talking about? Is this the mother that St. Andrew was talking about? Is this the mother that St. Andrew was searching when he went to heaven? No. Is this really the gospel picture of Mary? Let us take a look at her first at Cana of Galilee. The remarkable episode described to us in the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The first words of the episode strike us, a wedding feast at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Mary is thus present at a wedding feast. But we realize that she's not a killjoy, a stuck-up person. Above the ordinary joys and sorrows, Mary at heart is a very ordinary human being, sharing in the life events of those around her. And she teaches us, indeed, by example, that happiness and holiness go together. What happened at the wedding feast of Cana? At the wedding feast of Cana itself, Mary is not in a corner, unconcerned about what is going on. On the contrary, Mary is present with eyes wide open. When a supply of wine fails, her eye is quick to notice the shortage, and she sets about doing something to remedy the situation. She does not remain a spectator with folded hands. Rather, Mary involves herself in the needs and worries of others, and yet she does it in a quite unruffled manner. The exact opposite of the busybody who is all activity and no action. In a quiet way, she gets the miracle done and then quietly withdraws from the scene, so that not even the steward of the feast knows where the wine had come from. John chapter 2 verse 9. What would you and I do? We would show off. Aray, dekho, mene kya kiya? Pani ka wine ban gaya. And we would make blah, 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 blah all over the world. But my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, Mary's example at Cana is indeed a telling one. What does it teach us? That we must have keen eyes to be aware of the real situation around us. The shortages which were bound in the lives of the human beings today. Many of these shortages are man-made. The artificial scarcity of food which we have experienced in this lockdown, in this pandemic of housing and shelter. The scandal of clearing inequalities between the haves and the have-nots. Mary, my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, invites us to a sense of Christian realism to be aware of the injustice in the reality that confronts us each day and of the underlying structures that bring this about. Mary 
at Cana. Teaches us further that we must set about doing something about it. We cannot be content with just being spectators of history. We make history by our own lives and by our own involvement. Mary's example further reminds us that part of the action is indeed to bring the situation to Jesus in prayer. Indeed, the only thing a human being can do. That is why we have so many chapels around the Archdiocese of Bombay and they are practically full to capacity listening and hearing the word of God of her blessed son in the blessed sacrament. Cana, my dear brothers and sisters and my dear children, is not an episode. It's one episode. But Mary at the visitation teaches us a similar lesson. Immediately after the Annunciation, Luke tells us that Mary arose and went in haste to a hill country, to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Luke chapter 1 verse 39. That was a long, long, tedious journey into the hill country to Ain Karim, the town of Zechariah and Elizabeth. But Mary's love impels her to undertake that journey with haste. The visitation, my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, indeed, is the mystery of outgoing love. A love that impels one to go out to the aid of another in need, not counting the cost of oneself. That is what our own devotion to Mary must lead us. Year after year, we have been making this novena to our Blessed Mother. This year perhaps is different. But all these years as we grew up, thousands and thousands of pilgrims go to Valenkini, Madras. They go to Irla, they go to uh, Perpetual Sagat Bahim, St. Michael's, here, there and everywhere because the maternal love impels us to go and pray to her. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, but there is something I suspect in a devotion of Mary which offers flowers to her clay image in church and then hurl brick bats at her living image, her children around us. There is something I suspect in a devotion that mutters prayers to the mother and then spout insults and abuses on her children. There is something I suspect in a devotion that finds singing and walking in processions on her feast days and yet finds conviction by her absence in any morchas or processions fighting for human rights. We can ask ourselves in our own parish, how much do we work for human dignity and prestige? So my dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, the account of the visitation is replete with expressions of joy. The child in the womb leaps for joy. Elizabeth cries out in a loud voice and twice proclaims to Mary, Blessed. Mary's heart bursts forth in a song of praise. It is a joy linked with self-giving. The words of John Powell in his book Unconditional Love is indeed true. It is the paradox of the gospel. Satisfaction and fulfillment are the byproducts of dedicated love. They belong only to those who can reach beyond themselves, to whom giving is more important than receiving. When we have gone out of ourselves to others, then our hearts too will sing with Mary. All my being proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit finds joy in God my Savior. Luke chapter 1 verse 46. Mary's life, my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, was very much like our very own, a hard life. Since she was the wife and a mother of a working man, she suffered the anguish of being doubted by Joseph, Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, and the anxiety of finding no place in Bethlehem to give birth to her child, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. The flight into Egypt must surely have been a harrowing experience for her. Truly, she must have realized very early the impact of Simeon's words. 
that a sword will pierce through your own soul. Luke chapter 2 verse 35. My dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, the climax of Mary's suffering must surely have been Calvary. Where she was standing by the cross of Jesus as St. John tells us, John chapter 19 verse 25. She experienced the anguish of so many mothers who are unable to alleviate in any way the sufferings of their dear ones at the hands of torturers and executioners. Only, only a mother whose son is condemned to be executed and sees him die in agony will understand what she underwent. I repeat this key statement. Only, only a mother whose son is condemned to be executed and sees him die in agony will understand what she underwent. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, what does Mary at the foot of the cross teach you and me with regard to suffering? What has been the Christian attitude to suffering? Standing beside Mary at Calvary, we can reflect on this today when we unfold the theme, Mary Most Devout. First of all, a Christian can never make an idol of suffering. In itself, suffering is not something good. Otherwise, we would make one another suffer. There are times when we might have to cause pain and suffering. A surgeon, for example, may have to cause pain in excising a wound. A parent in correcting a wayward child. But suffering can never be an end in itself. It is not Christian to think that God made man in order to suffer. That would indeed be a cruel and sadistic God. Rather, God made man in order to be happy. Mary, my dear people, stands at the foot of the cross with Jesus at this supreme moment of his life. Yes, she stands beneath the cross at this supreme moment of his life. Like him, she is too prepared to pay the price. Her presence by his side at these last moments must surely have given Jesus the strength to endure to continue with this struggle against the evil of injustice and oppression. Whatever may be the cost, may she give us, her children, the same strength to continue the struggle of her son, Jesus. We pray today for our own mothers and our own fathers, our parents, that they may be devout in their life as married people and devout to their children, be their sons and daughters. What makes Mary exceptional in her total surrender to God? Luke chapter 1 verse 38. She doesn't fully understand God's plan for her. Not now, not later. She's confused at a virgin being asked to be the mother of the Son of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 34. She ponders over the visit of the shepherds. Luke chapter 2 verse 19. She's amazed and perhaps a little frightened at Simeon's prophecy. Luke chapter 2 verse 33. She thinks deeply about her 12 year old son teaching the Jewish elders. Luke chapter 2 verse 51. What does she know with chilling certainty is the personal and social trauma she will have to suffer being an unwed mother. When she makes a choice, human odds are against her. But she is willing to pay the price. She is willing to pay the price because it is God who is asking her. And this is the quality at the heart of the Christian's experience of every man and woman. Perhaps before I close, maybe an illustration of a young married couple will help us understand what we mean to be devout like Mary, our mother. And the illustration goes as follows. Jane and Jim were married, and just a few years had passed in their married life. Then Jim had a stroke of paralysis 
and it kept on increasing so much so that Jim became deaf and blind. But Jane continued looking after him. One day, Jim told Jane, My darling, my sweetheart, you are so young and you are so beautiful. Why do you want to destroy your life with me, a blind and a deaf man, a paralyzed man? Why don't you step out of our house, meet a young man, get married? I know you married me for better or for worse, but please go ahead. Get another man in your life and get married. And what did Jane do? Jane screamed at him saying, Jim, what are you talking about? I will never, never, never leave you. At the church's altar, before the church's minister, I promised you that I will love you till the end of your life. No matter you are paralyzed, you are broken, but I will love you and I will look after you till the end of your life and perhaps till I am alive. I will never leave you. I do not want to get married again. Marriage is only once in a lifetime. And I married you for better or for worse. What a beautiful example of a devout life. Today we have so many marriages on the rocks in our own archdiocese, in our own parish community, in our own families. And yet, Jane and Jim go before us as a wonderful example of loyalty, of, devoted, of devotedness to one another. What a fantastic love husband sacrifices for the wife and wife sacrifices for the husband. That, my dear brothers and sisters, is true love. That is what devotedness actually means of a husband and wife. That is being a devout wife and a devout husband. Let us, my dear children and my dear brothers and sisters, take home this message today. Mary, most devout. And let us be what St. Andrew was told by the angel guide. She is not here. She is with her suffering children, drying and wiping the tears of the suffering humanity on earth. Amen. May I request you to close your eyes for a moment and pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We shall now stand for the prayer of the faithful. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for Pope Francis, that through the intercession of Mother Mary, his devotion towards shepherding his flock may bear fruit. Your response, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who hold positions of authority that they may strive to implement suggestions for a safer and healthier world during the pandemic COVID-19. Your response, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those in poverty and deep financial crisis that we may be devoted to build God's kingdom by reaching out to them. Your response? Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are part of this Eucharistic celebration, that through the intercession of Mary, we all become devout worshippers to our Lord. Your response? Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our personal and local needs. We also pray for one of our priests who died yesterday, Father 
Ramesh Francis, that the Lord may grant him eternal rest. Your response, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Ever patient and loving God, you light the fire in our hearts. Through our loyalty towards you, help us in our attempts to come closer to your kingdom. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, through the intercession of Mary. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters and my dear children, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation. To praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be pray joined with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we proclaim... Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and also our gracious our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, be there to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
we will now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. As we receive the 70 sacrament, beseech your Lord your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may by imitating her so worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray to our Blessed Mother, O Most Holy Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus, Queen of the Universe and Refuge of Sinners, we greet you as we prepare to celebrate your birthday. Your faith in God and obedience to His will needs to be imitated by us. We know you will commend all our petitions to Jesus as you did at the wedding at Cana. We are assured that Jesus at your request will do what is best for us. We pray for ourselves, for our families and friends, and for our parish and society, especially for our different needs which we place before you. Please make your intentions. May you receive our praise and bless us with a heart like yours, full of love and compassion, so that like you we may serve our Heavenly Father, who lives and reigns with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The three Hail Marys together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Prayer for mercy from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, you assure us that your hand is not too short to save, nor your ear too dull to hear our prayer. You have revealed that you are ever attentive to our supplications. Your children are under the grip of fear because of the fast-spreading coronavirus pandemic in the different parts of the world. Send your power of your word and calm the storms of fear and desperation. Father God, take authority over this present crisis that your children may live in peace and security. You are the Lord who heals us. Heal those affected and strengthen the afflicted families. Give courage, protection and comfort to the medical personnel taking care of the sick. May your grace and comfort surround the dying and may their souls rest in peace. 
Holy Spirit, give wisdom and guidance to the scientists doing research that they may develop an effective medicine to combat the sickness speedily. We pray for the government authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the world. Lord Jesus, we remember you said, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. With the apostles we cry out to you, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Let not this present crisis lead your children to fear and gloom. Let them rather turn their hearts to you, finding their hope in you, who is our refuge forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Novena in honor of Saint Blaise. God, our loving Father, through the intercession of Saint Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, we ask you to continue to shower your healing on us, our families and our parish, and grant us our petitions. Mention your intentions. May we be faithful to you like Saint Blaise, who chose to suffer persecution rather than disown you. Like the woman who brought her suffering son to Saint Blaise, we bring you ourselves and our brothers and sisters in distress to be healed of our infirmities. Teach us to trust your plan for us, even if sometimes we don't understand why we must suffer. May our devotion to Saint Blaise make us concerned about those in pain and enable us to reach out and lighten their burdens. May your blessings and favors be showered abundantly on us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus. Holy Mary Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Blaise, pray for us. of new life.